going on everybody welcome back to the vlog we're on to a very exciting part of this project where we are starting all of our trim on all of the walls all the skirting we got some really cool stuff coming up so make sure you hit subscribe stay tuned and wait next week or it's it's gonna it's starting now the vlog starting now watch We have our facial walls going up, all of the skirting. It's a lot of square footage on these vertical walls. Let me show you what we got. Because we are doing that shorter riser here, we're only doing a six inch rise. We are doing five and a half inch coastal boards with a half inch gap. You can see how we stained all of our framing black so it disappears behind there. Looks really good. Let me show you a couple details about the way we go about this. Our corners here. Corners are a big detail for us. So what we do for a clean look and an easy install is run all of these long almost to our corner so that we don't have to worry about that cut too much. Then once they're installed, we will screw our track saw up on the wall and then we can track this out. And what we're gonna do, five and a half inch board on both sides for that corner so it's nice and tight and it's super easy. We're still up in the air whether we're gonna do Costa on that vertical corner or maybe dark slate, which I think could look awesome. Check out the stairs. Here's one of our signature details on our skirting to our stair transition. We have our skirting wall transition right into our riser board. The way that we achieve that look is by figuring out what our stair riser is. Here we're doing six inches, so we need to make sure that our skirting is a five and a half, then a half inch gap. So every time you start a new board, it's gonna line up with your risers. And when you look back, it just makes for a super clean, planned out look. We love it, we do it all the time. And now, let's look at our stair risers. Ant's working on them right now, let's go. I can hear you chewing. Really? Yeah. I can hear you spitting. Dude, you need to trim your nose hairs. I know, they're getting crazy. I've been in between. It's uh, the inside area. I could grab right now and probably pull out like 70 to Can you? Because I've been actually thinking every time I go to CVS. Try it. Oh! <laughs> oh, you got a couple of them. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's almost like eating a little wasabi. <laughs> every, time I, every time I do it, I sneeze. <laughs> oh, that felt good. All right. And why don't you show us how we're doing these risers, how you like to attack this detail to make it look so nice and long lasting. All right, so we're getting ready to wrap our risers and our facial walls on the side. So I'll give you a little step-by-step -step on it. First, you gotta measure. I'm gonna be adding material on both sides. So I'll just take scraps. Hook that and you come over here and it gives me my long to long measurement. I'm sitting at 73 and 78. Now we cut it. Quick little tip that I do. Sure, you just you can set your saw at 45, cut it, and make it work. I just like to go a little bit more. I'll set it at like 46. are five and a half but our risers are cut to six so we have a lot of these half inch spacers just laying around the job site so I'll put them down then aren't and you slide your miter to where you're just hitting your short point nice good on both sides
So I just have a few screws set. And the reason I like to do that is because it still allows me to get glue in here. So I'll just loosen this up a little bit. So this can have some flex. I like to get a couple screws started. Put it up with our trusty 2P10. detail here this is going to be our uh, built-in grill area so we framed it up put some walls on it then we're putting this half inch plywood on. Yeah! So it'll... stupid <laughs> well done with that <laughs> anyway all right so We've got our outdoor kitchen getting started here. We are going to be installing our field boards on the deck later this week. The delivery should be getting here, not tomorrow, but the next day. So we just have this outer wall getting put on. We'll also do our side walls, just the perimeter of this bar so that we can get our plywood sheathing on it. And then once the field boards come, we got a lot of those to lay. So we'll be busy for a while, but this is gonna be huge huge outdoor kitchen. We're calling it the DJ booth. Cause you can be like up here like this, like. Bit of a shame cutting down this nice crepe myrtle, but uh, it's had a lot of issues. It's got some some deadness to it so they've been trying to bring it back to life the last couple years but it's also right next to the deck so they decided you know what let's just cut it out and uh put it to rest so that's what we're doing we're just cutting it down with the uh sawzall it's a big tree <laughs> it's gonna be a big stump to get out good thing we got a skid steer coming today Finishing up some stairs and uh, treads and everything. We got the big boy machine here. I'm gonna start digging out for our patio and our walls. We got stone here. So I'm gonna be cooped up in this little machine here for a while and uh, we're gonna start moving the big stuff now. Let's go! It's go time, baby! thing all dug out now we're starting to compact our subgrade we got the new Bartel 1570 I think it's pretty badass let me show you something real quick We 
got the reversible plate compactor. I think it's super nice to get into corners. You can stop it. You can just let it sit on an area and jump for that extra compaction. But uh, really nice. Good purchase. Oh, I just finished up this stair set. I decided to go with the Costa Dark Slate Costa. Turned out pretty sick. I prefabricated all of the treads and uh, installed them all myself and then plugged it. And uh, it's looking great. So got this hammer a couple years ago. It's very cool. So I'm the only one that has one of these. I replace the handle every every once in a while, but the head, this I will pass down for generations. It's, <laughs> it's really my <laughs> crown jewel. I want you to show the time lapse of me building everything and then in the vlog end it like yeah. this. Yeah. All right, get to work, man. Got our boulders. They're big. They're heavy. Uh, they're about 500 pounds a piece. Nine on a pallet. Pallet's about 4,500 pounds. They're heavy. They're real heavy. But we got it. And we got it. No, there's no I in boulder. There's no I in boulder, but there is a U. And there's a, I'm getting too older for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a lot of boulders. It's going to be worth it, though. They look sick. We got the Yukon Valley Natural Stone. These are the Seneca boulders guillotined. Like Queen Elizabeth. Did she get guillotined? Is that how she went out? Re recently? Yeah. I don't think that's appropriate. Oh. Uh, anyway, got the Seneca boulders guillotined. 12 inches high, really nice uniform height. So we're going to use this on all of our edge of the whole thing. You can see we're building this up quite a significant amount. So uh, this is gonna help us kind of transition that. That is gonna turn into a step over here and it's gonna look really nice and nice natural. Nice natural look for this natural setting. I think it's gonna be a home run as long as we can get them in here. They're heavy, but. That looks like a piece of three quarter stone. What's this one look like? Piece of chip stone. Gonna check our center point. Yeah, it was right, it needs to come this way. Yeah, get in there. If you're ever on a construction site and you wanna know who's in charge, who's the top dog, look for the man with the can. That's also the man with the plan. Did you know that, Ant? Yep. <laughs>
starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm. We've never done boulders this big, so uh, to be honest, we weren't really properly equipped, I'd say. But uh, just think about it. The ancient Egyptians built the whole pyramids with just, I don't know, levers and ramps and stuff. So uh, we're getting them into place with the forks on the machine, getting them like pretty close. And then what we can do, we got the rock bar here. We still have a good amount of fine tuning to do on these, but we can just go like this. Boom, we can lift it up, pry it up, this side, that side, get it, uh, get it level and we should be good. So we're just trying to get them into place, get our uh, radius and then we're gonna go back, fine tune each one, get them sitting a little bit better, but uh, we're learning as we go. And that's what it's all about. We're learning a lot of lessons here. Rome wasn't built in a day, but we're doing pretty good here. a bit of a uh, better technique going on uh, day two of the boulders. We've got uh, the machine getting them on the forks. We're positioning them as close as we can and then uh, making some minor adjustments with the rock bar. It's working out pretty good. We're learning. We're definitely learning here. Hey, you learning? Yeah, I'm learning how to do it. <laughs> We got our last piece going in here to uh, connect everything and then we can continue on our circle. We've got uh, this won't fit. It won't fit, but I think what we do is we could just move this one out of the way a little bit because uh, what I realized we gotta move a lot of these. Why? I messed up on my line. What do you mean? This is way too far out. You're fing with me. <laughs> we just gotta move it a little bit. What do you just tell me what happened? All right, here's what happened. How too big? How too big is it? It's a couple feet. It's a couple feet. I put, I, I did the center of the circle in the center of like the fire pit because it's based off of like a 22 foot diameter circle or something, and then I don't know what happened. These ones are pretty close, like but the first two are good. The first two are like right. close, but now we got a lot of practice. So tune into the next vlog to see us. We're, we're basically pros now, so we'll be fixing this. We'll be we'll be making uh, some minor adjustments. So make sure you hit subscribe. Stay tuned, and until next time, if there is a next time, this has been Premier Outdoor Living.